There are two types of demand for money. You have transactions demand for money and the asset demand for money. And when by money we're talking about actual notes currency. Let's assume for the rest of the section that individuals can either hold bonds or money. Now that's not the case in reality. Individuals can either hold financial instruments such as shares, put them in interest bearing accounts, but it's either bonds or money. Let's just assume that to make things a bit simpler. So there's two types of demand for money. There's the transactions demand where people hold money according to what they want to buy with that money. So if you go to the shop, you want to take say 100 rand with you to the shops, that is the transactions demand for money. You want to use that 100 rand in transactions. So that demand for money is irrespective of the interest rate. Doesn't matter what the interest rate is, you still want to have that money so that you can buy goods. So in terms of a graph with the amount of money being demanded and the interest rate, in terms of the transaction demand, it's going to be vertical. As the interest rate increases, your demand for money is not going to change. In this transactions demand, all you want that money for is to buy goods. What it is going to change with is nominal GDP. As nominal GDP increases, the price of products becoming, they increase as well, and so you're going to need more money to buy those same goods that you went to the shops to buy. So transactions demand, that curve would shift to the right if there was an increase in the nominal GDP so that you needed more money to actually go and purchase those goods. Another type of money demand is the asset demand. This views money as an asset, as a store of value. So you're going to see whether you want to hold bonds or other financial instruments or money. If you believe that prices are going to fall, you, you would rather hold money. Because if prices fall and you hold that money and it's a store of value, you'd be able to buy more goods later. And if the interest rate decreased, the opportunity cost of holding money would also decrease and so the demand for money would increase. Let's go through that logic again. The interest rate is the opportunity cost of holding money. Remember that opportunity cost was what you would have to forego if you produced one type of good. So if I was holding money, I would forego on putting that money in the bank or putting it in, using it to buy a bond and getting an interest rate or a yield from that bond. So the interest rate is the opportunity cost of holding money. Now, as the interest rate decreases, the opportunity cost of holding money also decreases and so your demand for holding money will increase. So according to the asset demand, it's demand for money, you're going to have a decreasing slope because as the interest rate decreases from there to there, your demand for holding money will increase because the opportunity cost of holding money is now lower. So you can hold more money when the interest rate decreases. Now this is the asset demand and this is transactions demand. Now to get total demand, all we do is we add these two figures up. So if you add these two figures up, you're going to get total demand. So in effect, that plus that is equal to that. So just remember that transactions demand is irrespective of the interest rate. Asset demand is decreasing with the interest rate. as It, it increases as the interest rate decreases. And you can sum them both up to get total demand. Now why would people want to hold money instead of bonds where they can get an interest? Well, money can be important. It is very liquid, so there's a lot of liquidity in, in associated with holding money. You can change the amount of money that you got very easily. And it's also a store of value and it's that unit of account. So for bonds, bonds can be very risky. Although money can also be risky because if you hold a lot of money and there's an increase in inflation, the purchasing power of your money is going to decrease. So you've got to look at those aspects, but what you have to know is that it'll, the demand for money will decrease with the interest rate because of that opportunity cost of money.